confident, calm, and even presidential. That's what the Democrats and the media wanted us to believe about Kamala Harris, especially in the last week of the campaign. Remember, we were told that momentum had shifted in her favor. In fact, she was so sure of herself that her rally speeches were under 15 minutes long, and she wasn't even mentioning Trump by name toward the end. They hoped that all of this would demoralize Trump voters and that it was going to be a Kamala layup. But then, punch it. They told me they fixed it. Trust in the election. It's not my fault. Democrats finally learned what happens when reality strikes back. Holy Toledo. It's just like. Oh, my goodness gracious. Trump's was the best GOP uh, showing among 18 to 29-year-olds in 20 years. You have to go all the way back to 2004. How about among black voters? It was the best performance for a Republican candidate for president in 48 years. Among Hispanic voters, the exit polls only go back since 1972. But, but Donald Trump's performance on Tuesday was the best for a Republican can presidential candidate in exit poll history. This election was about breaking through and going to that Democratic coalition and tearing it apart. I like that, Harry Anton. And so begins the lib liberals' bitter blame game, the 2024 edition. Es su culpa, hombres latinos. Also Latino men who, despite the utter disrespect shown by Trump and his promise to deport some of your mixed class, mixed status families, most of them voted in a 55% majority to make the deportations happen. So you own everything that happens to your mixed status families and to your wives, sisters, and abuelas from here on in. Dios mios. Is that really the way to speak to the fastest growing demographic in the United States? Imagine if I had said something like that. And what about white women? They were supposed to come to Kamala's rescue. Black people voted for somebody they know is a racist. White women voted for somebody they know took away their reproductive yes. rights. So all of those things are hard for people like me to understand. And rather than admitting that they went too radical on the trans agenda, Democrats blame Republicans for highlighting it. We shouldn't apologize for the fact that we do support uh, transgender rights and the people who are a part of that community. What Republicans were able to do is exploit that. <laughs> yeah, it's called discussing an issue. Of course, their favorite punching bag had to get the lion's share of the blame. There should be accountability, and Joe Biden should not have run for a second term. There should have been a competitive primary in January. He should have dropped out in January and not July. Now, the Biden pile-on is something to behold. The woman who forced him out, Nancy Pelosi, she told The New York Times, because the president endorsed Kamala Harris immediately, that really made it almost impossible to have an open primary at that time. That's really funny. They wanted it that way. She's still lying. And Democrats still think it's a comms problem. The Democrats are the ones, they are the, 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 the party that cares for the blue collar. Exactly. Yoga. The Republican Party doesn't give a rat's patootie well, about clearly. it. All I can deduce is that it's the messaging. It didn't get through to people. They're not paying attention. That's all. You're not paying attention, people. And of course, Democrats always find free speech very inconvenient. Yes, you're suffering. These things led to that. And I think that the Democratic Party has to really deal with listening to some of the people in the party that is trying to reconnect them to their, I, I, to their roots, what they stood for. I think that's fair, but I think we have to, we have to factor in massive disinformation. Oh, it's disinformation. <laughs> you knew that was coming. But there's no one who the Democrats will blame more, of course, for their failure than you, the voter. What is wrong with America? What is wrong with this country that they would choose a message of divisiveness, of xenophobia, of racism, of misogyny, over a message of inclusiveness, a message for the people, by the but people, of the people? That is what the problem is. 
They're still out of touch elites. They've learned nothing. They still despise you. They still look down on you. And they will never, and I mean never, admit their policies were to blame. Because that would require a move to the middle. And I don't see that happening, even after Tuesday's near wipeout. But inside the Harris campaign, everyone's just as depressed as Timmy the Cat Lady. Axios reports that Kamala's campaign manager started crying during a conference call last night. And Harris told them, quote, yeah, this sucks. Her staffers were sad but confused. One said, we're told the fate of democracy is at stake. And then the message was, we'll get them next time. Kamala is saying, we'll get Hitler next time. Her interns are just finding out the whole dictator thing was just a talking point. Don't y'all find it strange that now that he's won, they're not calling him a threat to democracy? They're not calling him a fascist? I mean, damn, on they're Monday... Not, they're not they calling can. him anything. On they can't. On Monday, they was just calling him that. I would think that, you know, if you really believe that, then somebody's speech would be about how America effed up and how, nope. how things are about to be Charlie, really bad. That man he's alone. the most powerful man in the world uh, well, now. It just makes you wonder how much of it, uh, did they really believe or how much of it was just politics? The Harris team's getting a little antsy with Kamala, and they're starting to leak. Staff is saying the campaign was constantly confused, and no one knew how to make a decision. Getting approval to tweet something was like figuring out how to solve a Rubik's Cube. And now the Harris campaign's pleading with staffers to stop leaking, please. So most of them are just going back to blaming Biden. One member of the Harris campaign says the 107-day Harris campaign was nearly flawless. The Biden campaign that preceded it was the opposite. And the Obama guys are just piling on. Joe Biden's decision to run for president again was a catastrophic mistake. It just was. And he and his inner circle, they refused to believe the polls. They refused to believe he was unpopular. They refused to acknowledge until very late that anyone could be upset about inflation. And they were privately telling reporters at the time that Kamala Harris couldn't win. So they were shiving Kamala Harris to reporters while they told everyone else not a time for an open process and his vice president can't win so he's the strongest candidate. Then we find out when Kamala Harris when the Harris when the Biden campaign becomes the Harris campaign that the Biden campaign's own internal polling at the time when they were telling us he was the strongest candidate showed that Donald Trump was going to win 400 electoral votes. Nancy Pelosi hasn't spoken to Biden since after the coup and that'll continue. After she told the New York Times, had the president gotten out sooner, there may have been other candidates in the race. Now, she's not speaking to Kamala. And she's still fuming that Biden's quick Kamala endorsement boxed her in. Nancy says it made it impossible for Democrats to have a primary. Things would have been different. Translation, Shapiro would have won and we would have had the first Jewish president, says Nance. Biden world is saying, you got to be kidding me. How did you spend a billion and not win? What the F? <laughs> Biden's folks say Kamala was destined to lose. There is a real question I hope people start looking at about who people are listening to. In yeah. my view, there was an over-listening to and an over-lifting up of people who left Trump, not people who left the Democratic Party. The people uh -huh. who left the Democratic Party are the people who are going to you know, win in the future. The people who left Trump the never Trumpers who have important mm -hmm. voices and have, that is not the winning coalition. Turns out closing with Liz Cheney was pretty stupid. Even John Stewart says the Harris campaign was stuck in the past. Turns out that people knocking on other people's doors doesn't get them to do what you want them to do. As I believe vacuum and Bible salesmen probably have known for many, many centuries. Uh, f us, f me. Uh, I was wrong. We'll continue to be wrong. <laughs> they didn't just lose to Trump. They lost the Senate, the House, Hispanic men, the Blue Wall, the Sun Belt, and millions of votes in the bluest cities. So there's no way Kamala recovers from this. We're hearing she might run for governor of California and take Newsom's job when he runs for president. So who's going to lead the party out of the wilderness? The Obamas? Democrats say no thanks. Party insiders say it's time for fresh blood. But David Axelrod says before we have a power struggle, we've got to recognize we're out of touch. You can't approach working people like missionaries and say, we're here to help you become more like us. 
there's a, unwritten, a kind of unspoken disdain, unintended disdain uh, in that. I think Biden has done, you know, programmatically some good things for working people, but the party itself has increasingly become a smarty pants, mm. suburban, college educated party, and uh, it, it lends itself to the kind of backlash that we've seen. Uh, the Clinton syndicate thinks Democrats are just too extreme. I'm not concerned right now what the right thinks about uh, the Democratic Party. I'm concerned about what I think about the Democratic Party. I don't like to echo the congressmen, all three of them. I don't like the fact that a small portion of our party is pretty much dictating where we are. That they are pretty much, we are being branded as the most extreme of us. We need to take stock of why we are being held hostage to the far left. No one should be and wants to be um, kowtowing to the extremes of their own parties. America's sick of the Democrats, and the country's moving right on immigration and energy. And if Democrats don't find a new approach and fast, they'll be out of power for years. That's what Newt Gingrich predicted here last night. So what are Democrats going to do? Well, they're plotting another coup. The machine wants to force Justice Sotomayor into early retirement. She's 70 and has diabetes. And install Kamala Harris in the lame duck session. I, for one, think that's a great idea. And I would like nothing more than to cover this until Christmas. But before they try the woman of color coup court thing, the Washington Post says the second resistance starts right now. Newsom is calling an emergency session in California to Trump-proof the state, whatever that means. The New York Attorney General, Tish James, just declared the lawfare campaign not over. She's prepared to fight back. And the governors of Massachusetts, New Jersey, and Illinois are preparing for trench warfare. Every tool in the toolbox has got to be used to protect our citizens, to protect our residents, and protect our states, and certainly to hold the line on democracy and the rule of law. As we respect the peaceful transition of power, that if there is any attack on the Garden State or on any of its communities from Washington, I will fight back with every fiber of my being. To anyone who intends to come take away the freedom and opportunity and dignity of Illinoisans, I would remind you that a happy warrior is still a warrior. You come for my people. You come through me. The second Trump resistance is coming into focus. It'll be blue state governors clashing with Trump to raise their profiles ahead of the 2028 election. This is a competition to be Trump's biggest nemesis. Who will be this year's Adam Schiff or James Comey? We're about to find out. So watch these figures jockey for position to get on a collision course with 47. Does this help the American people at all? No. But Democrats don't care because so far they've learned nothing from Tuesday. Prestigious Ivy League schools, they are postponing exams, they are canceling classes, they are providing students with crayons and Legos and cookies and milky, you know, to cope with, with Trump's election win. This is madness. What happened to the land of the free, the home of the brave? We're now what? <laughs> We're now the home of, uh, you know, comfort pets and, and the home of, of woke you know, lunatics that need comfort. I, it's bizarre. New Jersey's Governor Phil Murphy <laughs> dramatically pledged to fight to the death against Donald Trump's policies. The far left Guardian newspaper is offering therapy to devastated staff members. And last night, over at the Washington Post, a columnist, MS uh, DNC contributor named Jennifer Rubin, posting on X, quote, it is 1933. Hitler is in power. No time for a bleeping seminar on Democrats' messaging errors. Talk about snowflakes. If anyone still wonders why the Washington Post and all of these legacy media people have lost all credibility, nobody trusts them, take a look at Jennifer Rubin. But tonight, it is official. The Democrats are definitely in disarray. Donald Trump has, frankly, he has won and he has broken them, maybe beyond repair. Now, turn on any left-leading outlet, the chaos, the infighting, the hysteria is through the roof. You decide. Take a look. It I'm sorry, not, but Donald Trump hates veterans. He called them suckers and losers. 
He did. He absolutely, despite, Look, he has his whole life. He has his entire I know you're, life. I know you're super emotional. I, I just. Of course I am. The, 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 I'm the, terrified. I'm telling you. Democrats never got it. That while we were looking at all of the crazy things Donald Trump was saying on the campaign trail, all of the frightening things Donald Trump was saying on the campaign trail, they were looking at their wallet. They were looking what groceries cost, what gas costs, what rent costs. We are being branded as the most extreme of us. It is not only politically problematic, as we just saw, because none of this stuff helped the other day. Without a doubt, it's a problem. But we need to take stock of why we are being held hostage to the far left. Yeah. In my view, there was an over-listening to and an over-lifting up of people who left Trump, not people who left the Democratic Party. The people uh -huh. who left the Democratic Party are the people who are going to you know, win in the future. The people who left Trump the never Trumpers who have important mm -hmm. voices and have, that is not the winning coalition. Liberal Joe, can you go back and maybe watch your own show and listen to the things you were saying? You're as guilty of the very thing you're saying the liberals and Democrats are guilty of. Now, the co hosts of that hard hitting news show, The View, they're having a very hard time processing Donald Trump's win as they try to figure out just how many racists are lurking in the shadows. Take a look. The bigger question should be, yes, Sonny, why did they vote for him? Yes. In sweeping... So they need to be introspective. No, no, no. We need to be introspective. If we voted for they Kamala Harris, we need to say, offering. what didn't resonate with the voters? Do you know what didn't resonate with the voters? When they were saying we don't feel safe and the left focused on defund the police and bail reform. They also denied the border was a crisis and kept saying, no, 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 it's fine. This is not a... The, there was a the border bill, though. There was the a border bill. Yes, but Joy, my point the is they screamed and screamed and screamed. They didn't vote for him because he's a racist or a misogynist. They voted because they needed help in their everyday yeah, lives. But Sarah, they, they made they the majority of this country that? because uh, there's a every of... stat coming out on the people yeah. willing to self-reflect are showing these Oh, wait, they're going to say, I'm a racist and a misogynist in the exit You really think 74 million people are racist? Who's going to say that? Hey, guys, no excuses this time. They lost everything. A country that allows doesn't agree Environment to be ravaged, it's children to be shot, it's wealth to be hoarded, it's workers to be exploited, it's poor to starve, it's cops to murder. So you think America's it's a the country problem? In, prob uh, in trouble. If we played any more of that, I'd have to give free extra strength, Excedrin, to every one of you out there watching. Believe it or not, it actually gets worse. According to reports, Biden's staff and Kamala's staff, they've all turned on each other, blaming each other making for a very awkward last few months. And meanwhile, former New York mayor uh, Michael Bloomberg just wrote an op-ed criticizing Democrats for hiding Joe Biden's mental decline. I have a question for the former mayor. Mr. Bloomberg, we on this program were reporting on this in 2020 before Joe went to Washington. Um, don't you think you're a little late, Mr. Lil? And get this, apparently Democrats are now, you know, sparring over whether, you know, the left-wing Supreme Court Justice Sonia Sotomayor should be forced out uh, of office, off the Supreme Court, uh, before Trump is sworn in so Biden can pick a replacement. And some are even floating Kamala Harris for that position. Can't make this up either. Take a look. I hope that Joe Biden makes the next 10 weeks as consequential as he can. Um, I don't care about drawing outside the lines or what Republicans may think about it. This is within your purview. You can actually do it and you should do it. And, you know, one more thing, John, is you have a hell of a vice president right there who has a legal pedigree uh, to sit on the Supreme Court and let Republicans mm. go crazy and ape. I'm even mentioning that option. Mm. You're That's floating. Are you floating? <laughs> this is, you know, 739 a.m. on the East Coast. Did Bakari Sellers just float Vice President Kamala Harris as a potential Supreme Court nominee? Not only am I floating it, but I want to stir up everything. I want people's heads to explode this morning so we go into the weekend just knowing that the chaos has not ended just yet. I have a sad prediction. This is not only not going to stop, it's going to get worse. The panic for them is real. It is not a good time to be on the left. And whether they realize it or not, the Democratic Party, the deep state, uh, Washington bureaucracy, the state-run media mob are all facing a reckoning as President Donald J. Trump can sit back, watch them implode without any need for retribution, which they claim he's going to be doing. He's not. The American people no longer care what legacy media 
what Hollywood, what Obama, what, what, what celebrities have to say. Why? Because they have zero influence. Legacy media, celebrity influence is completely dead. Otherwise, this election would have turned out very differently because they spoke in one voice, they told the same lies, they had the same hysteria, the same propaganda, misinformation, the same smearing, lying, besmirchment. Donald Trump's ultimate revenge will be success for every American. Slashing regulations, decentralizing the federal government, cutting out waste, fraud, and abuse, flushing out corrupt actors. Uh, they have to go. People that have weaponized and, and destroyed the, the greatest law enforcement agency the world has ever known, the greatest intel community the world has ever known. They got to be cleaned up. Ending partisanship, ending a weaponized DOJ, ending lawfare, ending woke DEI policies. Uh, fixing the crisis created by the Biden administration, securing our border, bringing down the cost of living for every American and, and driving up energy production. Stop forcing us to get a certain stove and refrigerator and putting a car in our driveway that maybe people want or don't want. If you want to go buy a Tesla, peace through strength will be brought back. That will help bring stability to the world. And in just a little over two months, Donald Trump can finally hit the ground running. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.